Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the seven most epic collapses in price. Now, if you have a example which is more epic in terms of all these circumstances, leave me a comment below, but these are my seven. Narset Transcendent. Many pros compared her, and you can Google this, to Jace the Mind Sculptor. Now, why that is that so important? Because Jace the Mind Sculptor was so good he was banned. Kind of like Emiko, kind of like Reflector Maids, kind of like Smuggler's Copter, kind of like Feldon Guardian. Hmm. Seems to be a pattern here, right? Anyway, People Pros hyped this card up, and at her release, she was 40, almost $48. And this is hyped because people want to sell packs, people want to sell singles, and this is, I truly believe, some of the people who hyped this card knew that the card was not as good as JSD Mind Sculptor, because how could it be as good as JSD Mind Sculptor? It's really obvious when you read her abilities. However, she went on to tank and tank and tank at one point hitting $5. That is the story of Narset Transcendent. She never found a home. She was never even... Even though Blue White became a deck, she was not played in that deck because she was weak. She couldn't protect herself, and overall, all the abilities were not, they did not suit a Planeswalker right. Next, Soren, Lord of Innistrad. So I'm going to talk about the more recent spike, which is from RTR, where Soren was part of a black-white token deck. And what makes this an interesting spike was he began from Dark Ascension as a $40 card. Then he plummeted to $5, $6. Then he rose up again. And this is not something that you typically see from a Planeswalker, but he found a home in the black-white token deck. How popular was this black-white token deck? Well, it was helped by the fact that one of the of modern event decks was black-white tokens. So Soren became extremely popular after the modern event deck was released. It was a good entry point. And then they realized, oh my goodness, we're playing this deck that has no chance of beating these other more expensive decks. And hence his fall from grace again. So we don't see this double dip effect very much where a Planeswalker is hyped to begin with, falls flat, and then gets hyped again, only to fall flat again. But that is the story of Sorin. He has still not recovered from RTR. Or it looks like Gatecrass is the pinnacle, or pinnacle of his price. So good card i do like it it's just that for four mana you can get so much more right in modern you can get so much more than just creating one one tokens uh, that's not what you want to be doing at the time now bonfire of the damned good card good card bonfire of the damned x x and a red during rtr it was one of the most expensive cards as it did dominate it absolutely dominated standard everyone wanted to top deck the bonfire of the dam wipe out your opponent either via damage directly or even just board wiping and damage directly some combination of both however it was a one trick pony even the legacy decks that played Miracles did not want this particular Miracle because it was not that good. What happened was they did very well at one Pro Tour, spiked to $45.76, and since that time has never ever recovered, nor will it do so. One of the reasons was it's hard to put stuff in your library in a certain order now, and it's becoming more and more difficult as they ban these cards, like uh, Gitaxin Probe, like Ponder has always been banned. We don't get that many good card selection cantrips anymore. Therefore, the miracles are not really that great because they end up as a dead card in hand. And when you're playing something like Modern, having dead cards in your hand is not worth the risk, the upside of this card, top decking the card at a good time. All right, let's talk about this card. 
uh, Fragtus was a $23.85 card at one time. One of the most dominating cards from M13. And it is one of the cards that very difficult to deal with. I remember Restoration Angel into or Fragtus into Restoration Angel is just the worst feeling for a control player because you're like, okay, that's a lot of creatures, that's a lot of life. There's very big bodies, many big bodies. Okay, this is bad. Um, and you had to either uh, board wipe or you're going to lose the game. So this card has since fallen to $3.28. It is not a card that is particularly liquid at this point in time, nor is it one in high demand. But one time, this used to be the best card in standard. Turn 5 for Agtus would reset the board in every single way. It would gain you life. It would present a big body that you could trade. And should they have removal for it, you still get a body. And you still got the life. So overall, it was the correct combination of all these cards, of all these abilities into one card, which made it very difficult to beat in standard. And as you know, a lot of these trends are you know, very good in standard. Oh, it's no longer good in standard or it rotates out. And it doesn't have a home. That's what rotation is. It's all the good cards in standard not finding homes and plumbing into oblivion. Now, let's talk about Jace AOT. When it was released, people compared him to Jace the Mind Sculptor. Because every pro does this for every Planeswalker in blue. And he was $47.71 before people realized, wait, this is not Jace the Mind Sculptor. It doesn't take people very long to realize that Narset is not Jace. Jace AOT is not Jace the Mind Sculptor. And he goes from $47.71 to a more reasonable $10 price before spiking again over $20 and then dropping off the face of the earth at $275 and still actually declining. He is actually one of the better cards to speculate on of this list in my opinion. I do like him a lot because his entry point is very low. He is a one, okay, benefits. He is a Jace. Good for casual players. Benefit number two. The artwork is decent. I do like the artwork. And there's a lot of text. For a Jace, that's pretty good. Benefit number three. He is playable in Modern, where Modern has, you know, it's this is a viable option in Modern. I've seen it played in Tier 2 decks. So it's seeing some play in Modern. And for a $2.75 Mythic, seeing some play, whose name is Jace, it's always interesting. So I wouldn't... I would not be unhappy with 100 or 200 copies of this, which I do not own. I don't own that, but if I did come across a collection for that, I could get it for like $2 a copy. I think I would do it. No problems. All right. Shaw Khan, the Dragon Speaker. Okay. Personal story. This dude tried to sell me a bunch of Shaw Khans when it was like $40. I was like, no, this card's going to go down. He's like, well, okay, I'll sell it to you for $20. That's a really good deal. I was like, mm, it's a pretty good deal, but I think it's still going to go down. Never give in to the hype. Never. Ever. And the interesting part about this card is, wow, you see that like minus 20 is actually part of this graph? That's how bad this card is. It's a $2.24 average card and a $0.93 low card, so you can get a copy of this for under a dollar. Problem one. Lightning Dragon was just better. Whatever that dragon was in Pharos, it was just... Eons better than this card. Storm, uh, Storm Breath Dragon. Why, why would you play this over Storm Breath Dragon? Yes, it kills Storm Breath Dragon, but that's the only benefit for, of it. And every other, unless you're playing a deck with Storm Breath Dragon, which then, you know, you should be running your Storm Breath Dragons anyway. This card, hyped up. Oh, it was so hyped up. And people wanted to love it so much, but because it was a dragon planeswalker and it was Sarkhan and he was mad. Man, it, it just didn't happen. And the reason it didn't happen was because the card was not good. The power level was not good. It's a $2.24 card right now. I One of the things that I always say, and I said this about Amaket, where people were so in love with the set, and it was like, oh, it's a really powerful card. Okay, let me get into the story. Oh, let me finish that really statement really fast. 
Power level means everything. Unique cards with very high power levels will eventually be worth money. I can't tell you when, but I can tell you that that's true. Weak cards that may be okay in today's meta are not going to be worth money tomorrow after rotation. Now, let's talk about this card. I remember this card. It was first spotted in Walmart decks, blister packs in 2010, 2011. That was the only way that you could get a copy of this. And there wasn't that many of them, at least initially. So people were like, oh my goodness, where is this coming from? Where, where is this coming from? I need this card. I need this card. Well, they were paying up to $100 plus dollars each. So imagine like you find this at Walmart in a free pack. And a free pack back in the day, I think, was like $12.99, $11.99. Let's say it's $11.99. And this was an instant $100 bill. So you buy that for $12 and you get $100 and you get your booster packs. I remember like on either one of the forums, MTG Salvation or Magic Online Trading League, there was this one Walmart that had 20 of them. And the guy bought all 20 of them and he got to sell them for a hundred a piece, so $2,000, and he got to keep all the boost packs. That was epic. Well, it turned out this card was printed into Oblivion and then eventually every single Blister pack had this card and it became super easy and now you can get them for $1.50 for a playset. Still, one of the most interesting stories of a card is this one, Broodmate Dragon. Very, very intriguing how the psychology of Magic players work, where they feel like, oh, this is a really limited edition card. I don't know very much about it, but there's not many copies of it. They don't wait. They're very impatient. They start buying it and trading this for $100, $150, $200. And then they realize every single Walmart, eventually all the Walmarts are going to roll out of this promo. And that's what happened. And then you're looking at $0.25, cents, $0.50 cent promo from the $100 that it used to be. It was $100 at least. But imagine finding 20 of these when it was 100 bucks a piece for just this card. It's so sick, right? Anyway, that's it, guys. Let me know if I missed any cards. I will try to make another video like this if you like it. Bye, guys.